Yeah, it was a uh, very rough two days. We worked for about 50 hours straight. The only time we slept was maybe an hour and a half, two hours in our car or on no, the floor. No, you were in the front lobby. I was in, I was in the back of my Jeep. Yeah. Banks built, protected by Amsoil, with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. So thank you for showing up and thank you for watching our insanity for a year. It's been a hell of a go. Like Jay said, it's a $1 truck. They should have paid us the $1 to get, get it the hell out of there. One phrase, sick and wrong. That's what we've done. This is sick and wrong and you'll get to see it. So yeah, Eric, here we go. Starting to get the drift. And there we go. What we're doing is experimenting with supercharging diesels as part of an engine program or a crate engine or a turnkey engine program we're doing with the Duramax. We do about 5,000 engines a year into the defense industry and zero engines a year into the aftermarket. Well, that's just damn wrong. So we decided, okay, let's build an engine that's serious, seriously supercharged. And the Whipple family and the Banks family have been friends for decades. So went to Whipple. This is an L5P. It's a factory engine right off a GM rack. We put our parts in the engine in the Duramax plant in Moraine, Ohio. We want to put the camshaft, valve springs, the push rods all into that program back there. Then what they can't do back there, we do in California. So this engine is stock, and that includes the head bolts, the main cap bolts, Nothing has failed at 1,000 horsepower, so I kind of believe in, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Matt, if you, you can uh, yes. maybe give us a little insight on the... So you guys can all come up here in a minute and take yep. a look at this, but we've got just tons and tons of custom stuff on this engine. You mentioned uh, Dustin Whipple. Whipple did a full billet 3.8 liter front drive, front entry supercharger. This is the prototype for what will be on our R866SC Banks crate engine. Uh, we did a full custom Banks twin ram intake. Uh, another giant chunk of billet that turned into this incredible intake and drive system. Our friends at Kibitech, who did our, our knuckles in the suspension so that we could run eight lug, uh, took on the monumental task of doing our custom billet intake manifold, two piece intake manifold with an integrated charge air cooler in it. We did, uh, let's see, our friends at BBI took on the task of doing uh, our billet FIAD setup, our front engine accessory drive. That's all custom to our design. Uh, custom parts all over it. Um, of course, we've got Sean 
from Empire Fabrication, who did all this incredible, incredible detailed uh, metal work all over this thing, really transformed this engine bay into just, just pure art and jewelry to go along with our engine. From the Whipple blower forward is our, our two, our, our twin, twin ram, twin ram yep. intake uh, setup using a pair of our big ass filters. And, our, and with ram air going into it through. Yes, <laughs> and there's ram air through the headlights. So we cheated a bit. We changed the front fascia to an earlier four headlight setup, which is double ugly. Took the headlights out of the center one and did what I did on my 53 Studebaker in 1964 at Bonneville. The hinge systems, front and rear, all came out of his head. And, and of course, there's so many guys involved in this truck. Some of them are here after all-nighters last weekend. We're sitting on a custom Roadster Shop chassis here. Uh, Willwood brakes throughout. The, the biggest rotors you've ever seen are on this thing and the biggest calipers. Um, and in order, we had to put giant wheels on this thing in order to fit those brakes. Gail's longtime friend, Jonathan Peace from Spark Industries, did these crazy custom billet, full billet wheels that move air out from inside in, in the rotor to the low pressure zone outside. Yeah, so the air enters the center of the rotor on the inside, radiates out of the rotor into the inner perimeter of the wheel. We did something that has never been done in this style. We put fins on the outer perimeter of the wheel to help pull that air through the wheel. So Jeff Transu, who's standing right here, rendered this truck, the hood opening and the bed opening. That's all Jeff Transu. Yeah, Je Jeff and I are gonna have a talk later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had no idea how much work that would be. Now for the rear. Here we go, tons and tons and tons and tons of hours in this fully custom uh, bed set up here. Uh, you can see everything underneath this with the bed open. We can see our Roadster Shop chassis. Gail, another fr longtime friend of Gail's, Mike Thermos, uh, Nitrous Supply. We've got his carbon, carbon overwrap bottles in here. Dragos Toma, he, he did the headers and the entire exhaust system all the way out the back. Uh, you can really get in here and see the, the rotors see our fuel system, our custom carbon fiber QA1 drive shaft, which unfortunately you can't see the full custom Allison transmission tail shaft that we have on this thing that allows us to run a slip yoke on an Allison, which is another thing that's, that's never really existed. So we had to do that full custom. So Clint at uh, ATS Transmissions tackled that, another huge project. Um, our friends at Braille supplied this crazy 3100 cold cranking amp lithium ion battery. Ride Tech, we've got full Ride Tech air, air ride system on this. Um, Aeromotive hooked us up with the fuel system. What else? Uh, our friends at, at, um, at TMI helped us out with the interior in here. Our MoTeC uh, modules in here, which are gonna power the uh, RA66 SC engine. And then what's lit up over there, Gail? Instrumentation, a lot of data monsters in the instrument panel. So you data, can data log data, everything that's going on in the truck while you're driving it. And you can play it back on the instruments. Uh, I invite you guys to come have a look, ask us questions. Uh, thank you for showing up. Really appreciate it. There's way more to come in this video series, by the way. And, and I'll say th thank you to all of the people who supported this project. Thanks to you, Gail, for making this a reality. It's been a blast. It's been hard, hard work, but it's been a blast. The speed equipment industry, the hardcore speed equipment industry, is in this vehicle. I mean, dozens of companies, and a lot of them still family owned, which is what we like to do. You know, the third, third generation, one of the best fabricators I've ever met in my life is standing right here, my grandson, Eric. So, <laughs> last night he was bleeding out of his eyeballs. It, you know, two, two all-nighters in a row. The engine comes out when we get back. It's gonna go on the pump and we're gonna develop the engine. All of that 
all of that will be on video for you. We want to bring you guys into what we're doing and have some fun because we're sure as hell having fun. So ha have thank, a look. Thank guys. you guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Project Lockjaw, in partnering with banks, has been a lot of fun for QA1 because we love innovation. For the Lockjaw setup with banks, I don't know if you guys probably saw the YouTube videos out there, but uh, they sent us the truck, we scanned it, and we designed a whole custom chassis for what they wanted to do. Really worked with Gail and the team at Banks to, to really create something unique, some different lobes, some unique lobes specifically for that application with its high demand, obviously, large boost, large cylinder pressure. We've worked with Gail for many, many years and look forward to continuing that relationship. And when that thing got unveiled, I mean, what a what a beautiful car. And that's that's something I kept telling Jay. I was like, there's no half measure you guys do. It is, it is full bore, it is 100% effort and it is the high quality that you guys are known for. It was, it was one of the coolest engines I've seen at this show, probably at SEMA ever. So thanks so much, Gail, everybody at Banks, Jay, for our long friendship, Jay, and, and incorporating us on the build for this truck. We're super looking forward to how it comes out, how it's gonna work, and for season two, because I think we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, the last, the last 50 hours has been crazy, but we, we worked so hard, I can't, Thank everyone enough that helped on this truck. Quinn, everyone at back at, at Banks that helped yeah, us out. Yeah, so many guys Gary. came at the last minute. Sean rallied all his connections. We had, I think, at one point we had, I might have mentioned it. We had like seven or eight fabricators in the shop. Yeah. Everyone doing like some, some guys were welding and then they were plumbing and then doing wiring, kind of wherever they could help. Yeah. And we wouldn't have made it without them. Yeah, but we're no here, way. and it's in one we piece. So we did it. I've never felt so exhausted, but felt this. I felt it was a. It's the best feeling to be accompanied with the feeling of accomplishment uh, getting this here. And I'm so excited, I'm so happy. This is a dream come true to me, and I'm glad, I, I'm glad to be able to do it besides someone like Eric. We did yeah, it. I need some more sleep first, though. And yeah. Then, and then maybe it'll set in. Typically, you see a diesel, it's turbo diesel. Indeed. What made you decide to go with the uh, supercharger Sick versus turbo? Okay. <laughs> This is the Tesla Ooh, Model S, and um, we uh, actually... Does, does Musk know about this? I, Musk uh, will know about this very <laughs> soon, yeah, yeah.